Hi, this is Dr. Sweeney. What we're going to do today is we're actually going to go out and solve first order linear systems of differential equations using Laplace transforms. The use of Laplace transforms allows us to transform these systems into algebra and then to work with them algebraically or use some linear algebra in order to solve the systems. What we're going to use is we're going to use Kramer's rule in order to go, then go in and solve these systems and simplify a lot of our computation. So if you don't have any experience with Kramer's rule, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down inside of the notes so that you can click on that, watch a video on uh, Kramer's rule, and then follow along from there. What you're going to find is that this simplifies things quite a bit because the algebra is a lot easier to work with than it, it is to go through and again to, to take integrals. And that's one of the key reasons why we use Laplace transforms. So let's take a look. So let's take a look at a general system of first order differential equations. This one's gonna be a two by two. So we've got two unknown uh, functions, call them x1 and x2. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be working with constant coefficients. And for our purposes, that's gonna kind of set up and allow us to really kind of simplify the process of solving these first order systems. Beta one and beta two are both gonna be functions and what we'll do is we'll have that the Laplace transform of beta one, we're gonna call our, it's gonna be called big beta one, and the Laplace transform of big beta two is gonna call big beta two. The Laplace transform of x one is gonna be big x one, and the Laplace transform of, of x two is gonna be big x two. So what we're gonna do first, like anything else that we've been doing with Laplace transforms, is we're gonna go in and we're gonna take the Laplace transform of both sides. So I've got the Laplace transform of x one prime, is gonna equal, and a11 is a constant, so we're just gonna pull that out, and that's gonna be by times big x1, because that's the Laplace transform of x1, plus a12 times big x2. And again, those just represent the Laplace transforms of a little x1 and a little x2. Those are functions, by the way, plus beta one. And then L of x2 prime is gonna equal a21 big x1 plus a 2, 2, big X 2, plus beta 2. So what we've gone and done here is we've taken the Laplace transform of both sides. Now, I'm gonna substitute in for my, my, uh, my derivatives. So remember that when I take the Laplace transform of a derivative, it's gonna give me S L of X 1 minus X 1 of zero, and that'll equal then A 1, 1, X 1, plus A 1, 2, X 2, plus beta one, and then I'll have S L of X two minus X two of zero, and that'll equal A one one big X one plus A, or excuse me, A two one big X one plus A two two big X two plus beta two. Now I'm gonna substitute in what these values are. So that's gonna be then S big X one minus and this will be alpha one equals a one one x one plus a one two x big x two plus beta two big beta or big beta one excuse me. And then I'll have s x two minus alpha two equals a two one big x one plus a two two big x two plus beta two. Now all I've got to do is essentially combine my terms. I'm going to move all of my x1s, my Laplace transforms over to one side and all my other functions to the right hand side. So I'm going to have s of x1 minus a11 x1 plus or minus a12 x2 equals alpha1 plus beta1 and then I'll have s of x2 or excuse me I'll pull this back. I'm going to get a21 x1, and that'll be negative, plus s x2 minus a22 big x2, and that'll equal alpha 2 plus beta 2. So essentially, I moved my alphas and betas over to one side, right? The, essentially, the non homogeneous part of the, the uh, system of equations, and then I had all of my big x1s and my big x2s to the other side. What that's then going to give me is that's going to give me s minus a11 big x1 minus a12 big x2 and that'll equal alpha 1 plus beta 1. And then I'll have negative a21 big x1 plus 
S minus A22, big X2, and that'll equal alpha 2 plus beta 2. And so this is my transformed system of equations. And what we're going to do with that, that transformed system of equations, is we're going to go in and we're going to solve it for big X1 and big X2. And then from there, once we figure out what big X1 and big X2 are, we're then going to take the, the inverse Laplace transform to give us back the solution to our differential equation. All right, so let's take a look at an example. What we're going to do is we're going to utilize this equation, the one that we generated earlier on, in order to set up a system of equations to find the Laplace transform of little x1 and little x2. Then we're going to use Kramer's rule in order to go in and solve for big X1 and big X2, right, those Laplace transforms, and then we'll take the inverse Laplace transform to give us back the solution to our system. So let's take a look at this system. We've got x1 prime equals 2x2, and we'll have x1 of 0 equal to 0, and we'll have x2 prime equal to negative 2x1, and x2 of 0 is going to equal 1. In this equation, we'll notice first that a11 is 0. Okay, so we've got a11 equals to 0, a12 is going to equal 2, a21 is going to equal negative 2, and a22 is going to equal 0. And again, that's because we have no x2 term inside of x2, uh, the x2 prime equation. We're also going to notice that alpha 1 is going to equal 0, that's this uh, initial value, and alpha 2 is going to equal 1. We don't have a beta 1 and a beta 2 because what we're looking at is we're looking at some homogeneous systems. Now I'll go and put this into my equation. I've got s of big X1 minus 2 of big X2, and that'll equal 0. And then I'll have negative of negative 2, so that's 2 big X1 plus s of big X2, and that'll equal 1. This is going to give me the system s2 negative 2s, or s negative 2 2s, times big X1 big X2, those are our Laplace transforms, and that equals 0, 1. Now I'm going to use Kramer's in order to solve this system. So first, what I need to do is I need to find the determinant of this original matrix, and that ends up equaling s squared plus 4. Big X1 is going to equal, according to Kramer's, it'll be 0, 1, or 0, negative 2, 1, s, that determinant, over s squared plus 4. And so that ends up equaling 2 over s squared plus 4. And then big X2 is going to equal the determinant of s, 0, 2, 1, over s squared plus 4. And that's s over s squared plus 4. And that, in fact, those are now our Laplace transforms. So Kramer's rule actually simplifies this quite a lot. Now all I've got to do is I've got to take the inverse Laplace transform of big X1, and that'll be the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s squared plus 4. And that gives me that little x1 is equal to sine of 2t. Then I'll take the inverse Laplace transform of big X2, and that'll be the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 4. And that means that little x2 is going to equal cosine of 2t. And that, in fact, is the solution to our system. That vector, called vector x, is sine 2t cosine 2t. And there we are. So our process is we go in, we actually input our values into this particular system of equations in order to solve for uh, uh, big x1, big x2 using Kramer's rule. Okay. Once we found it using Kramer's rule, we'll take the inverse Laplace transforms in order to give us back the solution to our system. Let's take a look at one more example, something slightly more difficult. If we have x1 prime equal to 3x1 minus 2x2, and x2 prime equal to 2x1 minus 2x2, and we'll have x1 of 0 equal to 3 and x2 of 0 equal to 1 half. We'll get that a11 is equal to 3, a12 is equal to negative 2, a21 equals 2, and a22 equals negative 2. Now we'll put that into our system. And what that'll give me is that'll give me s minus 3 times big X1 minus negative 2 X2 equals 3. And then we'll have negative 2 X1 plus 
S minus a negative 2 x2 equals 1 half. What that gives me then, I got S minus 3 big X1 plus 2 big X2 equals 3. I have negative 2 big X1 plus S plus 2 big X2 equal to 1 half. What that give me as a system, the system that we're then going to solve, is it's going to be S minus 3, 2, negative 2, S plus 2, big X1, big X2, equal to 3, 1 half. So I'll use Kramer's rule in order to solve for that. The determinant first of my coefficient matrix, that's going to be S minus 3 times S plus 2 plus 4, and that'll then be S, or S squared minus S minus 6 plus 4. That'll be then S squared minus S minus 2. And if we actually factor that, that'll give me S minus 2 times S plus 1. Now, big X1 is going to equal 3, 1 half, 2, and S plus 2. We'll set it up that way. Divide that through by our S minus 2 times S plus 1. And so that gives me 3 times S plus 2 minus 1 over S minus 2 times S plus 1. Or 3S plus 5 over S minus 2 times S plus 1. Big X2, my Laplace transform, will then be S minus 3, 3. Uh, negative 2, 1 half, and that'll then all divided by s minus 2 times s plus 1, and that'll end up then equaling 1 half times s minus 3 plus 6 all over s minus 2 times s plus 1, and that ends up giving me then 1 half s plus 9 over 2 divided by s minus 2 times s plus 1. To save us a little bit of time, I've gone in and I've already done the um, partial fractions. Big X1 will equal negative 2 over 3 divided by s plus 1 plus 11 over 3 divided by s minus 2. Big X2 will then equal negative 4 over 3 divided by s plus 1 plus 11 over 6 divided by s minus 2. We'll take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. And the inverse Laplace transform for negative 2 thirds over s plus 1 is going to be negative 2 thirds e to the negative t plus then 11, the inverse Laplace transform of 11 thirds over s minus 2 is going to be 11 thirds e to the negative 2t. And that'll be my little x1. Then my x2 will be the inverse Laplace transform of big X2 here. And that'll then be equal to negative 4 thirds e to the negative t plus 11 sixths e to the negative 2t. And that is little x2. And this is the solution to your system of differential equations. So what we did here is we utilized a general method for solving essentially a 2 by 2 system. right? A system of first order linear differential equations with constant coefficients where we only had two functions that we were solving for. Now, if we wanted to go in and we wanted to, in fact, solve a, uh, any general system using Laplace transforms, the method would actually be basically the same. It would just be a bit more complicated and time consuming. You'd have more equations. That's always the way it is. But essentially what we do is, number one, we transform all our equations using the Laplace transforms. Then we group all our functions to develop a system of equations that can be solved using, say, Kramer's rule or utilizing some kind of technology. Then we'll solve the system for the Laplace transform functions using Kramer. So we'll get those like big X1, big X2, all those kind of things, those ones that we've actually found are our Laplace transforms. And then we'll use the inverse Laplace transform to give us back little x1, little x2, which are in fact the solution to our systems. And so essentially that's what we've done here today. So hopefully you can go in and utilize this in order to make solving systems of differential equations, especially first order systems, a lot simpler. This is Dr. George Sweeney and I want to thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful and you liked it, go ahead and click the thumbs up. If you want more of these videos and you want to get my updates, please click subscribe. 
If you have any questions or you just want to say how much you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave some comments. I do read and respond to the comments.